but I love preaching on the East Coast because I don't scare them. Amen. Exactly. And, and years of, they just are like, bring it on, whatever you have bring to say. Bring it on is right. And your gift as an evangelist, I was saying, I really admire the courage that that takes because you take a lot of heat from people. you got to be ready to defend your position. And, you know, one good thing about New York is you know where you stand with people. They'll get right up in your face, and they don't play games. So when nope. you come back to them with the truth, I love what you were saying before we went on about David Wilkerson, you know, when yes. you were seeing him preach back in the day. The anointing was so strong that people would be frozen in their seats with conviction. And he didn't do it in a, in a demeaning or a shaming way. It was just the power of God in operation. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, one of the things that I wanted to get said right off the top is this. You know, I believe, folks, and I'm going to say this from the bottom of my heart, that God is doing a new thing. Yeah. We all know what's happening in our streets. We've got riots. We've got anger. We... You know, people are creating a new form of racism that they think is the cure of the old racism. And they think that the new normal is going to help us when all the new normal is, is the old abnormal. Mm -hmm. right. And what we're going to do is watch God work. Amen. Yeah. The problem is, and is that the vessels that God chooses to work in the next few years are going to be weird to us because they're designed to impact the loss. They're not, mm -hmm. the church has got a weak stomach. The church is, is a little bit skittish, except for a few fiery core believers that don't go to church for any other reason except to become armed and dangerous. Right. I, uh, I feel that influence is going to come back to voices of God in America. Right. And it, it won't be easy, but it's coming. And I believe that all of this stuff with the China virus and the Everything else, all the tumultuous things and the hatred toward our president, all of it is playing into the hands of God yeah. because Agreed. he always yeah. has a way of doing things. And I believe don't. that the shaking that's taken place, yeah. it, it has to take place because there's just been so much of corruption, even yes. in the church. You know, there's yes. been a root system of passivity. There's been a, a root system of, of a lack of the fear of the Lord, calling evil good and good evil. And, and God right. is saying enough is enough. And he wants that whole thing turned around. And, you know, and if in Revelations 4, it says that he'd rather us be hot or cold. But if we're lukewarm, he'll spit us yeah, out of his mouth, go. right? So God is calling us to this place of, you know, like Elijah said, how long will you falter between two opinions? And so it's either God be God or he's not. And that's, that's what exactly I believe that. That, that the Lord is shaking us. This whole, Everything that's happening, that God is turning things around. I love what your book says, uh, Vessels of Fire and Glory. And it says, breaking demonic spells over America to release a great awakening. And, and that's what we're, we're, you know, we're really crying out for. We have to address the issues which are at hand. And what? we can't keep our head in the sand. You know, no. I was uh, saying, well, you came into the kingdom right during the riots in Berkeley, right? And uh, that was part of your home turf, and you saw the kind of turmoil and upheaval uh, due to the Vietnam War and the protests, but the drugs were also coming back from Vietnam when the guys were coming back, and LSD wasn't even illegal yep. in, in the mid-'60s yet. People hadn't figured, government hadn't figured out that it was, a, it was a terrible drug, and it was destroying right. people's lives. So, millions, you know, that, millions of kids. For yes. people that don't know your history, maybe you could just give a little bit of that. Uh, well, you... I grew up in San Francisco, which is kind of a Disneyland version of New York City. <laughs> and, uh, and I think that's why I love New York so much, is that it's what we were trying to do in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And so three movements were exploding when I was in high school. And we had race riots. Our school... We had six murders in the three years that I was in that high school in the south ex southeast section of San Francisco. There was a free speech movement just starting, which would embrace the anti-war movement. The other was this uh, hippie movement where 50,000 kids came and did a bee-in in Bowling Gate Park in San Francisco. And the third was this tiny fledgling thing that someone called the Jesus movement, and we called them Jesus freaks. But we had no idea. We never thought this little Jesus movement had a chance against psychedelic music and against 40,000 protesters in Berkeley. But God did an amazing thing. And I had to choose, so I chose to follow Christ. Amen. 
I gave up Marxism and I chose to follow Christ. Then he told me to go to Berkeley right out of, uh, you know, still a teenager, going to the most intellectual anti-God campus in America. And one night I was grabbed on campus, 11 o'clock at night. The guy's choking me to death. He's six foot five. He's a bodybuilder. He's a communist and he wants to kill me. Literally, he's choking me to death. So I was there witnessing and he's going to kill me. And God had told me over and over and over again, I'm going to use you with signs and wonders. I'm not going to give you an intellectual gospel. They've got all, they've got enough intellect already. They need the power of God. Mm. They need to see the demonstration of the power of God. So I went down there teaching uh, them the intellectual apologetic Christianity. And I'm standing on the campus 11 o'clock at night, witnessing to a flower child when I'm grabbed from behind and the man begins to choke me to death. And I'm standing there and I scream, you know, I can't breathe. So I, I have to send loud thought prayers up to God. <laughs> and in this thought prayer, I said, God, you got to save my life. And I had been quoting Francis Schaeffer, C.S. Lewis, G.K. Chesterton, all the Christian apologists. And the, I said, Lord, please get me out of this. What do I say to this man? And the Lord, it was sarcastic. The Holy Spirit said, tell him what C.S. Lewis said. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said, you know, Lord, this is not funny right here. I'm dying right now. <laughs> and I said, and the Holy Spirit says, uh, will you obey me? I said, I'll do anything. And God said, anything? And I'm thinking, pretty much anything. <laughs> you know, I was holding something back. Hmm. And the Lord said, rebuke him in the name of Jesus. Right. Power of God came on my body. And I literally pointed at him and I commanded him in the name of Jesus, get his hands off my throat. I pulled him off and I backed him up and there are bushes behind me. He quit staring at me and started staring at the bushes. He's six five wow. and he's looking up at something. His <laughs> eyes look like silver dollars <laughs> staring at something like a raccoon staring at truck headlights. And all of a sudden I ran I didn't, and you know what? I don't know what he saw or what scared him. And people ask me all mm -hmm. the time, well, did you turn around and look <laughs> what he saw? I said, you know, this is why white people die in the ghetto right here, <laughs> is they want to look. And I said, but we in the inner city, we know to run. And I ran. And all the way home, I said, God, it's miracles, signs, and wonders. Mm -hmm. We began a Saturday night of miracles. Right. Our group grew from 30 to 100 to 500 to 2,000 awesome. university students. So it, that was before, really, John, before John Wimber wrote Power Evangelism. You were doing Power Evangelism. Uh, and oh, before yeah. they said treasure hunting, mm -hmm. I'd go on the streets and speak in tongues for an hour and wait. And because everybody I talked to would try to slap me. <laughs> everybody I talked to wanted to either spit on me, crush my tracks, or or attack me. Right. You sure you Lord weren't said, in New York? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This was, this, they were probably a lot of kids from New York going to Berkeley at that right. time. But uh, the, so quickly, you know, they would say, uh, they would tell, curse me and everything else. And the Lord said, don't try to argue with them. Pray in the spirit. Mm. And then suddenly I would look at him and say, are you from Texas or are you from Pennsylvania? And they'd look at me and say, how did you know that? And right. that's long before I heard the term treasure hunting. But you see, that's what we need now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And God is doing a new thing. Mm -hmm. Everybody watching needs to understand God is doing a new thing. There's going to be a new way to run church. Right. There's going to be a new way to be relevant to Americans. Do you mind just releasing that? Could you just release that over the yeah. audience right now that that would get stoked up inside of us? Lord Jesus, I just command it that we Amen. are ready for your next miracle on our country. Amen. We refuse to believe that these voices of anger and rage against your word and your people are going to win. We pray, Lord, for a miracle in the name of Jesus. And I speak it over this audience right now that gifts of power, gifts of prophecy and healing, gifts of the anointing are being released even to those that are in the far corners of this country mm -hmm. because they love America and God's going to use them. 
Amen. 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 We receive it. You know, it's important to break that unbelief. And it, just because it might not have happened in your life already, God's Thank doing you. a new thing. So don't worry See? about what didn't happen. Just believe it's going to happen now. And, you know, I just want to say the new thing that God's doing is he's, he's addressing all of our hearts and he's dealing with our root systems. He's dealing with our root systems of racism, of unbelief, of, of uh, a lack of a fear of the Lord, of, of just complacency. And he's saying, no, he, he, first of all, he loves us too much to let us stay where we're at. And it's like, right. okay, now I'm wa you know, wake up, everybody. You're coming out of that place of complacency for whoever chooses to go with him. And God, there's a remnant. There's an army that the Lord is raising up. That's, that's ready to go mm -hmm. because of our love for him, but our love for our country and our love for people. Because this, this, this is all about. It's for his kingdom that's... purposes and souls and for a turnaround in our nation. You know, uh, it's uh, the, the kind of preaching you're doing, Tricia, right now, the, the kind of preaching you're doing is the preaching of this hour. Amen. And, and the, the shallowness, the what I call the big screen, skinny jeans and fog machines approach. Americans are done with that. Yeah. They're done with it. They yeah. want someone to say you're wrong in love right. and preach the cross, the blood and discipleship. And we can't be afraid to let people know, you know, from the jump, you've got to give it all to Christ. Right. There's no... There's no layaway plan here. No. You, you get saved and you serve him yeah. right. and you follow him. And I think we've appealed too often. American pastors have tried to appeal to our culture in a certain way. And what we've done is we've created what I call a low, low impact, high maintenance Christian. It takes a lot to keep them happy and they'd never get anything done. But had we appealed to the disciple? And said, you know what, maybe we're not going to grow explosively at first, but we're going to grow people that want to be here right. and want to serve God right. and love the Lord. And we'll, we'll read the word like the Bible described. Even Paul compared Christians. He said the, the Bereans weren't like this group over here because they searched the scriptures to right. see the things were true. When and we, when first, I, when we yeah. first came out here, uh, you know, we... I've always been working, so we didn't have the same kind of financial pressure that some people do when they start a church. And, uh, you know, sometimes people would try to make a donation and say, uh, can I preach now that I made a big donation? Yeah. And Trisha's just like too straight up, like it was the right thing. She's like, look, we don't need your money. God's got the money. We want people who are, have the anointing. <laughs> so when you get the anointing, we'll talk about preaching. But until then, you know, like it was just what he needed to hear. And he ended up thanking her later. At the time, he was kind of put off. But that's okay. Yeah. You know, you need the reality check that decaf Christianity just doesn't work. It's, it's, no. a, it's a social club. No, it doesn't. You know, the, 